Hey there, Dr. Craig Chalquist. I want to talk a little bit about narcissistic abuse, which is harder to spot than the grandiose kind we associate with people like Donald Trump, you know, the braggart. I'm the best at everything. I'm the chosen one. I'm, I'm good at this. I'm good at that. And, you know, selfishness, never making your financial commitments and so on. So everybody has a pretty clear idea of what that looks like, that the, the covert kind is harder to spot, especially in relationships. And so this came to mind recently because uh, a friend of mine is going through a breakup and uh, according to her, her ex-partner is going around quietly blowing up her relationships with her friends and coworkers and other people, which is a classic sign of this. And so um, I'm not diagnosing him. I've never met the person, but it brought all this back to me because uh, I've had some training in dealing with this as well as personal, painful experience in relationships as well. And so um, at the end of this, I want to talk about an idea that she had, which was to do an online weekly low fee group for people who are uh, trying to get through narcissistic abuse. So uh, covert narcissism, it's, it's this, it kind of the same in terms of the selfishness, uh, manipulative behavior, lying, gaslighting, um, retaliatory behavior, and all that other stuff that comes with grandiose narcissism. Huge sense of entitlement, but it's internal. So people who are covertly um, suffering from this kind of narcissism are really good at hiding it. And they're often very charming, very intelligent. They are good at love bombing you and making you feel good about yourself. And it's only when you get close to them and you see them at close quarters over many months or even years that you begin to see the discrepancies between what they say in public and how they behave and how they are at home. So um, I want to give you a couple of characteristics of covert narcissism to watch out for, but with a little warning that I always issue, which is this, that any one of these can be things that you do, that I do, wherever, and it doesn't necessarily make you a narcissist. The idea is that the more of these that are present, the greater the likelihood that there's some kind of covert narcissism going on. So whenever you hear these kinds of lists, how to spot this, how to spot that, right? Keep that in mind. There's no one thing, right? So um, some, some pretty typical characteristics. This isn't a comprehensive list either. I could spend hours talking about this. These are just... A few things that came to mind, and I have a list here that I made um, really quick because I like to make lists. So um, w one thing that I've already mentioned is the strong retaliation. So when people with covert narcissism feel like you've betrayed them somehow or hurt their feelings or that you're in a relationship that you're breaking up with them, they will hit back to restore their self-esteem, which is fragile. So what they'll do is go around to your friends and your colleagues sometimes, if they know them. And they're too smart usually to come right out and say things about you. They'll, they'll say them to your face, like they'll even accuse you of being a narcissist, right? So more on that in a, in a moment. But um, no, they're too smart for that. They'll do it by innuendo. So they'll bring you up or when you come up in conversation, they'll go, oh, mm, yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, you want to keep your eye on that one. Yeah, hmm. Yeah, I know. I know a lot more about them than um, really that I ever wanted to. Um, and they'll do that kind of passive aggressive stuff to smear your reputation. Um, and then they might they might act like they don't want to talk about it. Like, yeah, I don't. I I don't want to bash anybody. I don't want to get into it. And then if the other person asks a few more questions, they might say, well, yeah, they did do this and they did do that and they'll just make stuff up. <clears throat> so their their goal is to isolate you and and punish you for the fact that their feelings and their self-esteem are hurt. So they'll be really smart about how they do this and they've had a lot of practice if they're uh, adults so they're they're good at it, right? And so you can expect to lose some friends and the trust of some colleagues when you're subjected to this. I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I'm sorry to have to tell you this. And um, <clears throat> right now, my friend is going around having heart-to-heart -heart conversations with everybody who's on the receiving end of this manipulation. But there's a couple of people that have just moved on, and that's, that's sad. 
they, they weren't discerning enough to see that they were being manipulated. Um, other things that covert narcissists will do. So one of them is um, they will blow up. Sometimes they will blow up special occasions that they know mean a lot to you. Your birthday, they'll pick a fight with you. Um, the day before Valentine's Day. <clears throat> Christmas, um, something something special. You might be graduating from school and they'll pick a fight with you the day before. Um, it's motivated by envy, unconscious envy. And um, I don't have time to go into all of that. I want to keep this short. But um, that's, that's a characteristic behavior. It's called spoiling in, in the clinical world. They'll spoil things, right? Um, they're funny about money. They lack transparency about money. They don't want to spend it on you. Or they'll start out by spending it lavishly on you as part of their love bombing, and then all that goes away. So um, lack of transparency about money sometimes happens and sometimes doesn't. Um, a lot of manipulation, lying, passive aggression, and the lying is usually by omission. Um, they're, they're often too smart to just tell you a verifiable lie that you can see through. <clears throat> um, there might be some self-righteous moralizing going on to make you feel small. So that might be part of the package. I mentioned that they have one face in public and one in private that's very different. So look out for that. And here's a pretty strong symptom. Um, you'll bring up a concern with them. This could be coworkers, especially though this happens in relationships where they've done something upsetting and you're owning your feelings, you're being a mature adult and you're, you tell them I'm upset by this and that we need to talk about this. And they will promptly turn the whole thing around and blame it on you. It's your fault, right? And uh, they'll either do this directly or by innuendo and imply that it's your fault and do, you know, mix in a little gaslighting, stuff like that. They will take no responsibility. And uh, sometimes people who have this going on don't ever apologize for anything. Um, some do apologize, but it's surface. And you can expect a retaliatory behavior to follow soon after the apology, the supposed apology. And uh, pretty much um, whenever this happens, this, this, these difficulties, they will see themselves as the victim and you as the persecutor. And they'll try to convince you that you, you are the persecutor. <clears throat> they may not use that word, but they'll blame it all on you. So isn't this fun? Isn't this fun to have all this directed at you? It's crazy making. And so um, the idea for the groups, maybe a weekly online group so we can do them with people from anywhere in the world. Uh, each group would be maybe, I'm just thinking out loud, an hour, an hour and a half, something like that. I said low fees, so like 20 bucks a group, 20 bucks a session, something like that. Not therapy. I don't do therapy anymore. <clears throat> this would more be for information. So I would bring in more than I've um, given you just now, but that would be an example of it. So I would bring something in for every session, every week, different facets of dealing with uh various sides of narcissism, narcissistic abuse, how to recover from it, how to deal with different um, challenges around it. And then we would all be there to support each other. The groups would be small, like four or five people. So um, let me know what you think and whether this would be useful. Um, one thing I don't want is a lot of comments about your ex um, or anything like that. Just tell me if it would be useful and if you're, if you're interested. So um, but whether or not you are, I hope this I hope this is helpful. There's some pretty good videos in TikTok about dealing with narcissism. So surf around a little bit. Um, some some of the people in here know a lot about it and they're good at teaching you about what to avoid. And this has, by the way, um, huge implications for politics, for religion, for work. A lot of people leave workplaces because they have narcissistic bosses who are abusive. So this isn't only about relationships, even though this is, those are important. We've got a cultural problem, especially in this country, with different kinds of narcissism. So the groups at some point would address that as well. So thank you.